In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to create the drawing of the Titan 90L. Let's first take a look at the Titans of CNC drawing, as we are going to be using this as a reference. In our upper left hand corner, we have the external thread data table, and all the information inside of this can be found in a machinist handbook. To the right of it, we have our front view, and our front view has the section line splitting it in half, and we see that half of our part down here in our bottom view. Within our bottom view, we also have a detailed view, which we can see on the right hand side. Going back to our front view and over to the right, we have our right-handed view. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, we have our isometric view, and it also has a detailed view, which can be seen here. This particular detailed view is unnecessary, um, so we will not be including it in our drawing. Let's jump over to Fusion 360 and create this drawing. I'm over here in Fusion, and the very first thing that we need to do is we need to tell Fusion 360 the orientation of our part. If you look up here in your upper right hand corner, currently my perspective of how I drew this part, this is actually our front view. Well, I want to make this face here, which I just clicked on, our front view. But before I do this, what we need to do is we need to kind of set ourselves up for success by turning on our sketches that we use to create this part. The sketch that we're going to turn on is actually the sketch that we use to revolve the outside of our part. And you can see this by turning off your body. What I want to do is I want to make that sketch on the left hand side of my part, like so, and I want this face to be facing towards me. And it doesn't need to be perfect, just needs to be close. Then I'm going to go up to my view cube and click on, click on the words left here. Yours may say right or something else. And that will kind of square up your part within your workspace. Afterwards, we're going to right click on the view cube and go down to set current view as front. Notice the orientation of your view cube has changed and now this is our front of our part. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new sketch on our part as we are going to be referencing a single point on this sketch in our drawing workspace. The point that we are after is actually this point where it's coming down from the flange and this intersecting line here. Unfortunately, in our drawing workspace, it will not allow us to reference this point. So we're going to force it to reference it. To do this, what we're going to do is go to Construct and down to Tangent Plane. We're going to create our tangent plane on the outside of the part, the part like so. And then the reference plane that we are going to use is our sketch of the outside of our part. Afterwards, we're going to change our angle to 180 degrees like so, and then press OK. Notice now, notice now, when we create this, the sketch will be on the back side of our part. Now we're going to go over and project some of our geometry. So P on the keyboard is a shortcut for project. And we're going to create our new sketch on this construction plane we just created. We're going to zoom in and we're going to click on this intersection where the vertical line and this angled line intersect. Like so. And then press OK.
It's hard to see right now, so I'm going to turn off my sketch number one and my body. And notice we have a purple point here. The issue is, is Fusion 360 will not recognize a projected point in our drawing workspace. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a regular point by going up to create and down to point. And we're going to drop our point anywhere in our workspace. Now that we have our regular point, we're going to add a coincident constraint between these two points. So constraints to coincident, and we're going to go from point to point, snapping them together. And afterwards, we can finish our sketch. I'm going to turn the visibility of our body back on, and notice we have this point in outer space here. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to save our part. And then we're going to change our workspace from the design into our drawing workspace from design. In our pop-up window here, it's asking us, do you want everything in the modeling workspace to be a part of your drawing? And we do. We are creating a new drawing here. And the template that we are going to be using can be referenced in a previous video on how to create a title block template. Afterwards, pre afterwards press OK. And we're going to move this part into our drawing workspace. Very first view that, view that Fusion 360 wants to land here is our front view. We're going to change some of the settings in our pop-up window. We're going to change the style to visible edges and its scale to a two to one scale. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn off thread edges and then we're going to turn tangent edges on to full body. We're going to place our view in the kind of in the, in the center upper region of our sheet and then press OK. The next view that we're going to land in is our section view. So we're going to go up to our toolbar to drawing views down to section view. We're going to click on the part and we're going to gesture our mouse to the center and we'll see that little pop up window here indicating that's the center. We're going to drag our mouse over to the left and then over to the right and click and then press enter. This will create our section view. And we're going to drag our section view down to the bottom, which will make a bottom view. The next view that we're going to land is our right view. We're going to go back to drawing views, this time to projected view. We're going to click on our front view here, dragging our mouse to the right. And then while we're here, we're going to land in our isometric view, dragging our mouse to the bottom left clicking again, and then pressing enter on the keyboard. Our isometric view, we're going to change it from a wireframe into a shaded view by double left clicking on it and changing its style to shaded with visible edges. The last view that we're going to add in is our detailed view of our threads. We're going to go back to drawing views, this time to detail view. We're going to click on the bottom view here as our reference. We're going to position our mouse kind of in the center of our threads, left click and drag out this section circle here. If you make a mistake now, you can always move the circle around after the fact. So don't be afraid to make a mistake. And this time we're dragging our section view up above our title block like so. As I mentioned before, if you make a mistake, you can always come in and click on your, your detail circle and you can drag these handles around, making the detail circle larger or smaller. You can also click on the handle in the center and drag it around, changing its location. As soon as you move the location of the detail circle, 
your view will automatically update. Now that we have our views landed, we're going to take a look at our bottom view and we're going to add in some construction geometry for this. We're going to go up to geometry and down to center mark. And we're going to mark the center locations of each one of these little um, radiuses here. And this will enable us to reference our measurements off of them. In addition to that, we're going to add in a center line. So back to geometry, this time to center line. And we're going to reference off of the outside portion of this flange here. Right click, press OK. Afterwards, we're going to grab the center line and move its arrowheads to the bottom of our part, like so. And then the one that's really critical is the top of our center line needs to be at the very top of our part. So we're going to reference an edge like so. And afterwards, you need to really zoom in and make sure your, your center line does not protrude above the top of your part. While we're here, we're going to add in our datum location. So we're going to go to dimensions to ordinate dimensions. And we're going to reference right off the zero location here, dragging our mouse up like so. We're also going to reference an endpoint on the top of our part and drag our mouse over, landing our two zero locations. We're going to change our annotation settings, so bottom center of our workspace. We're going to go and turn on uh, display trailing zeros. And then we're going to change our linear dimension precision to the thousands column. Notice when we do this, our zero locations have changed. To change it to read just zero, we're going to double left click on it and change our primary precision to read zero. And we'll repeat that on the other one. I'm going to drag my dimension line up a little bit. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over to our browser tab and we're going to turn the visibility of our sketches on and then open our sketches up to that sketch that we created before we left the modeling workspace. Notice when I turn that on, we get this plus symbol that appears at that point location. Once we have that on, we're going to go back up to ordinate dimensions and we're going to reference that location and then moving our mouse over to our the end of our extension line of our previous measurement. And notice you'll see this green construction line appear. This will enable you to get all your measurements in alignment to each other. We're going to repeat the process on the outside of our part, like so. Now that we have our measurements in place, we're going to, on for the horizontal measurements, we're going to start adding in our vertical measurements the same exact way. Again, referencing the previous extension line. like so. Now if you made a mistake like I did, you can always click on your extension lines and drag them around after the fact and align them where you need them to be. Now that we got our ordinate dimensions in place, we're going to add in some regular dimensions. So D on the keyboard. 
the first dimension that we're going to add in is the diameter of our hole here. We're going to click on the vertical lines that make up this hole. We're going to drag our measurement up to the top here, like so. Then we're going to start adding in the dimensions from our center marks here to the center line. So we're going to go from center mark to center line and land our dimension in. And we're going to repeat this for every single one. So center mark to center line. Be mindful if you're getting an angle dimension that you're clicking on the, the center location there where those two lines intersect. Now notice a couple of my measurements jumped off the screen there. That's okay. After we get those measurements in, we're going to right click, press OK, and you can drag them around to whatever location you need them to be at after the fact. In addition to that, I'm actually going to drag our measurements off the part so I can actually read them. It looks like we missed one here, so D on the keyboard again. We're finding that intersection point. Actually, we didn't miss it. Jump down here. That's where it went. So if you made a, a duplication of your measurement, you can always click on it and press delete. And I'll delete the duplication. Now that we have all of our measurements in place, we're going to add in some other information here. We're going to go up to this 426 diameter here. We're going to double click on it. We're going to go in front of the bracket and add a diameter symbol in. Then we're going to go to the back side of the bracket and put the depth of the hole in. And then also insert the depth symbol. We're going to hit shift enter. And that will give us another line. We're going to type in 140 degree drill point. Oops. And then we'll close that out. Notice that some of my text here is overlapping the other measurements. That's OK. You can always drag this around after the fact and kind of clean up this workspace. I'm actually going to put a bring this measurement down a little bit. Actually, we'll we'll extend that out a little bit so they line up. And instead of trying to bring it down because I want these lines to be in line with my my center marks there I may move this one up a little bit or maybe it, maybe that'll look better is moving it over like so 
That way it gets it away from all these other measurements. The big thing is, is when you're creating your print, is you want to make sure that your print is easy to understand and your measurements are not getting lost. So say for example, like this measurement here, this 425 could almost be associated with our drill point here. So again, I'm going to move this back a little bit and get that out of the way. That's looking better. On the very top of our hole here, we're going to use a text with a leader line. I'm going to reference off of the top of our hole and we're going to reference our threads. These are half 13 unified course class two B threads. I'm going to hit shift enter, giving us a return. They're going to go 400 thousandths minimum in depth. And we'll close that out. Now that we have our bottom view all fully defined, we're going to jump over to our detailed view. Because we're getting really close to this text box here, we're going to move our detailed view over. And we're going to add in a couple dimensions here. D on the keyboard. First dimension we're going to add in is from our thread relief. So from vertical line to vertical line. We're going to land that in. Our next measurement is going to go from crest of the thread from one side to the crest of the thread on another side. And then lastly, we're going to come over here and we're going to add in our radius dimension like so. We're going to organize our, our dimensions here. Right click, press OK. Again, we're going to drag these on the outside here. We'll drag this measurement on the outside. And then this particular measurement, this radius, we're going to add a little note in here. We want this to be max. That's the maximum amount. And that's going to be typical two times. These two measurements here, we're going to add in a diameter symbol. And then we're also going to add in the width of that feature. So we're going to insert our symbol first. Click at the back of the bracket, and our thread relief needs to be 65 thousandths wide. Same thing with this one, insert the symbol, back of the bracket. This feature needs to be 300 thousandths wide. After the fact, you can always move these measurements around and organize your space again. We have couple more things to do on this. We're going to put in our chamfers here. This time we're going to use a text with a leader. We'll click on this, um, this angled line here. Type in chamfer 35 thousandths at 45. We'll insert the degree symbol. Typical, oops, typical two times because so we have a thread on the the leading portion of our thread and then the back side of our thread I'm gonna add a return here on this so we can get that away from our our back our bottom view and then lastly before we're done with this particular view I'm gonna click on the text box that makes up our detailed view here and I'm going to change its overall size from 
240 thousandths down to 100 thousandths. Oops. And then we'll close that out. Get an all overall perspective for it. Again, you can move your your views around. You want to make sure that all your information on these views are not kind of jumbled up on each other. You want to make sure that everything is easy to read and and definitely easy to comprehend. We're going to jump up to our right-handed view now. We're going to go D on the keyboard. And we're going to zoom into this little radius here. I'm going to click on it. Drag our mouse up. Then we have this larger radius underneath it. And we'll click there. And then we're going to choose one of these radiuses here. Clicking on it. Afterwards, we'll right click and press OK, and then we'll reorganize these measurements. Again, this is something that is up to the, the user to kind of reorganize. There's no real set way on how to organize this stuff. The biggest thing is, is you want to make sure that it's easy to comprehend. This particular radius here of 10 thousandths, there are 12 instances that share that measurement. So we're going to double click on this. We'll click at the bottom or the back side of the bracket, type in typical 12 times. And then this radius of 50 thousandths is typical five times. At the end of our part here, we've got a, a radius entering into a chamfer and entering into another chamfer. We're going to add these chamfers in with a leader line. We're first going to click on this little chamfer here. I'm going to type in chamfer, and this particular one is going to be at 10 thousandths at 45 degrees. We'll close that out. And then on the back side, again, text with a leader, chamfer. This one is going to be 60 thousandths at 45 degrees. We'll close that out. We have one more chamfer to state up here. Text with the leader. The edge of our part here. There's a little chamfer there. We'll close that guy out. I notice I missed a zero here, so we're going to add that zero in. Again, we're going to take a look at our workspace here and make sure everything's nice and organized. Then we're going to jump over to our front view, dimensions, down to diameter dimension. We're going to click on the outside of our part dragging an overall diameter of the part. It's a good opportunity. Take a look at all your views. Make sure that they're not overlapping each other. Make sure everything's easy to read. You got nothing extending off of your sheet. Now we're going to come up to our upper left-hand corner and add in our table.
for our thread data. We're going to go to our tool bottle tool and go down to table. We're going to snap this to the upper left hand corner. But notice when we did this, I forgot to change one thing, so we're going to close this out. We're going to delete that. We're going to go back to our toolbar to tables down to table. This time we're going to change our reference to an empty table. That's what I forgot to do before. We'll land our table out. What you need to do now is you need to click in a cell. And in the pop-up window here, we're going to delete our columns until we see one column. Then we'll double click in cell number one. And we're going to type in external thread data. These are 3 8 16 unified course class 2A threads. I'm going to highlight this and bold it up. And then we'll close that out. You can grab on your table after the fact and kind of extend it out and that will collapse your information down. We're going to click in cell number two. This one is going to be our major diameters here. We'll close that out. Cell number three. This one's going to be labeled as max of 373 thousandths and seven tenths. And we're going to change its justification to middle left. This one's going to be minimum, 364 and 3 tenths. And again, change its justification to left. Then we have mean, 369, and change its justification. Before we exit this cell, we're going to hit tab, giving us another row. This becomes our pitch diameter. And we'll change its justification to center. Tab again. Max. 331 or 333 and a tenth. Change our justification. Minimum. 328 and 7 tenths. Minor diameter. Change the justification. And our last one, minimum 288 and a tenth. And we can close that out. This chart is necessary um, because if you give your drawing to a machinist, instead of them searching through the machinist handbook, they have all the data right on the print. The last thing that we're going to update, bottom right corner, is our title block. We're going to double left click on the lines that make up our title block. We're going to update our material to 6061 T6 aluminum. And then we're going to go over to our revision block and update it. This is revision A and press OK. Somehow at some point I put in a balloon here. We'll delete that balloon. It's a good opportunity. Double check your print. Look for mistakes, just like I mentioned I had a balloon in there for some reason. And this concludes the tutorial on how to create